First to the ring, boxing out of the red corner, representing Wales, Johan Kroos. Approaching the boxing ring for fight number three of Birmingham 2022 is Johan Kroos. Coming off a quarter final inside the distance victory. Stopping Luis Mbewi of Malawi in the second round with a clinical display of counter punching where his left cross was eye catching indeed. Out of the blue corner, representing Scotland, Tyler Jolly. It's also the third bout of Birmingham 2022 for Tyler Jolly. Unanimous point decision winner over Papua New Guinea's two-time reigning national champion Neville Warupi in his quarter-final but that wasn't without drama because he was decked heavily in the second round, round by an overhand Ladies right and gentlemen, this came through is the fire to prevail in the men's welterweight division contested over three three-minute rounds introducing to you first in the red corner representing Wales e His opponent boxing out of the blue corner representing Scotland. Tyler We're in the 67 kilogram welterweight division. And this is a contest between boxers from Wales and Scotland. The taller figure wearing red, operating out of the South Pole stands, is Johan Croft, 20 years of age, from Cardigan in West Wales. The man who has just made a forward foray is Tyler Jolly, 23 years of age, from Dumfries. Both boxers have been incredibly impressive in their two victories to this point. And these men have relatively recent history because last year at the Algier de Sokias multinations tournament in Kaunas, Lithuania, Johan Croft beat Tyler Jolly en route to top spot on the podium. Tyler Jolly coming away with a bronze medal match, conceding a unanimous points decision. So the psychological advantage, perhaps with Croft, Croft, but this is a year down the line, an altogether bigger stage, and both men competing for a place in the final. Two fairly tall boxers for the weight here. 63.5 kg. Don't get many boxers uh, of this height. One run of their rules. 63.5 to 67, should I say. So it's um, welterweights, isn't it? Yeah, of course. But they're, well, they're too, they're too tall welterweights indeed, anyway. Indeed. But uh, one, one little mistake that he's making here, Tyler Jolly, what he's got to watch out for, Ron, is when he comes forward, he just brings that rear leg round occasionally. I think he senses he's going to fall short and brings the rear leg round. Then he comes square. And against Croft, you're not going to get away with that too often. So he's got to watch what he's doing. You see it there again, he rushes forward. And he won't keep getting away with it. Croft will adjust his feet and bring him onto his left hand. But yes, two tall welterweights, Ronald. Indeed. Skillful as well. A significant roar that first encounter from the multi nations event in Lithuania B. Two minutes gone in the opening round. Left cross not left left cross not too far away from Johan Cross. Both boxers keeping their eyebrows out of harm's way as the heads come together on the inside. Good work to the body from Tyler Jolly while preventing Croft from working away. Yeah, that was good from Jolly there. You heard those punches thud home. And 
And again, Jolly, the busier boxer on the inside. Croft not able to untangle those long arms and score on the inside when the opportunity is perhaps there. Tempted left cross to the body was short of the mark from Croft. A lot of respect between the two with the first round in the book. Watch the three. Watch the team. Keep changing that position in front of him. Don't stand in the same position. All right? Nice and loose. Slightly better work, I think, from Jolly. Three or four shots going in there to the body. I thought Croft's timing was a little off here in this round, so he's taking a bit of time to get to grips with it. Scrappy sort of opening round. But there's not a lot in the round, Ron. I think Jolly just did the probably the more effective work. Let's have a look. Yeah, there you go. And that's how the judges see it. A 3-2 split in favour of Tyler Jolly after three minutes of boxing. So we move into the second round. Both boxers in their third bouts of Birmingham 2022 and having conceded the first on a 3-2 split, looking to get out briskly is Joanne Croft. Tyler Jolly with that right hand up around his temple. Warding off the south poor left that may be shot in from Joanne Croft. Tyler Jolly, one of the most exciting boxers in the entire tournament, set a Commonwealth Games record in his round of 16 encounter against Jamaica's Daniel Hilton. A 20-second knockout came out aggressively and then sunk a picture-perfect left hook into the liver of the Jamaican boxer, leaving him paralyzed on the canvas in a fair amount of distress, was waved off immediately, and that 20-second stoppage breaking the record by Leonard Macanya of Swaziland who set that record way back in Edinburgh, 1986. When he knocked out Kerry Webber in 21 seconds. Then he was decked, of course, in the second round, but came through the fight to prevail. Here he is in an altogether more circumspect display against a man he knows very well in the form of Johan Croft. Bit surprised that Croft isn't um, catching Jolly as he's coming forward here. He could set up uh, his left hand, also his left uppercut. If you brought the left uppercut into play, if you watch the way Jolly's boxing, it's very fast approach. There you go, just on right on cue. So as Jolly's coming forward, with that leg coming round, he comes square. And that's when he's uh, a little bit vulnerable. There you go, there's a left hand there. From That was a good shot from Johan Croft. Either the straight left hand or the left uppercut is the, is the punch for me from Croft, that's what he's got to do here. Nice counter right hand landed by Jolly, was just looking at the canvas as he attempted his reply. Hard left hand driven into the body by Croft. And Jolly holding on. Croft working to get his hands free inside the final minute of the second round. Croft back into ring centre. Met there by Tyler Jolly, both boxers peering between their gloves, backhand lead. Fired in by Jolly, good left hand driven into the stomach by Johan Croft. Really effective shot from him. And Jolly just, well I was going to say he's initiating clinches, but then he was keen to show Nelka Tampu of Sri Lanka that it wasn't he who was holding. Well at the moment these fast raiding attacks from Jolly, you know that they're paying off aren't they it's a little bit scrappy on the inside i think the bit of frustration has crept into johan croft's uh, work there but a fairly close round i thought croft is landing with that shot now that left hand but also jolly had his success coming forward so oh. and he feels that he's winning could all be on the last round but good round of boxing most certainly Remember a 3-2 split in the first round in favour of Jolly. Second round very close again, but this man did have success with that left cross to the body. Yeah, probably got his act together a little bit better here, Johan Croft, and um, timed his counters as Jolly's coming forward. Time and again, Jolly comes forward and brings his feet, his right leg around, so he comes square. A little bit more vulnerable in that round, but he did on the other occasion catch Croft 
with a shot like that, but I tended to feel that Croft did a little bit better in that round. Let's have what a look. say the judges? And it's a 3-2 split in favour of Croft. Excuse me, a 4-1 split in favour of Croft. Which means that we have four scorecards tied at 19 points apiece with three minutes remaining. For judge number one, it is Croft leading 20 points to 18. So it has all come down to the final three minutes in this battle between boxers from Wales and Scotland who have recent history. Floor cleaning crew called into action to ensure that the canvas is free of any ice cubes and excess water. So now that it has been cleaned to the satisfaction of the referee, this third and final round can finally get underway. A contest that remains in the balance. Good right hand driven into the body by Tyler Jolly. It was countered by a shot upstairs from Croft. And Tyler Jolly initiating here, but both men having success in the first 20 seconds. It's all about concentration now and getting your timing right. Croft's obviously got to concentrate as Jolly comes forward, but Jolly himself has got to concentrate and get his timing right, try and nip in and beat Croft to the punch. And he's managed to do that on several occasions. So it's all about the timing from both boxers. Again, Croft, I feel, that's a, a sharp left hand that he's got, and he could use that left uppercut. But don't write off Tyler Jolly coming forward, fast no. raising attacks. Saw Tyler Jolly repeatedly rubbing his head after that coming together. Oh, Let's no watch cut. the referee. So, Nelka Shiramala Tampu bumping her knuckles together, and that is a cut just beneath the hairline in the centre of Tyler Jolly's forehead. Well, Never good to be head. It's got to be head wrong. Yes, it, it was. She did bump her knuckles together. That's an accidental clash of heads. So. In the event that this injury causes the bout to be stopped, we will be going to the scorecards and the 50 seconds of round number three that have been completed will be scored. The doctor is happy for the contest to continue. The contest that remains in the balance has seen Tyler Jolly pick up the inconvenience of a cut. As cuts go, it's not in a bad place because the blood won't be running directly into his eyes. But that may well prove something of a distraction here now. I say it's not running into his eyes, but it is running down his forehead and in his face. So he's got that to deal with, as well as the southpaw from Wales, Johan Croft in front of him. Well, they say the best form of defence is attack, and that's what Jolly's doing here. Waiting and then rushing forward, trying to catch his man, which he did there with that shot. So Jolly is still in this contest, Ronald. Who can find that bit of quality, the eye-catching work, just to rock the head of the opponent back that's what's needed here now beyond the midpoint what I, well the referee let's keep an eye on the referee again again this injury which may have been worsened has been caused by a clash of heads i don't think it's a fresh injury i think it's the first one the first injury that perhaps has been exacerbated yeah, the referee has to stop the action, you see, because the blood could run into the eye and impair the vision of the boxer. So they have to look at, you know, they have to look after the boxer at the end of the day. But, yeah, so there we go. But both boxers have been spoken to repeatedly about failing to keep their heads up and excessive holding as well. We wouldn't. And again, you hear the instruction from Nelka Shiramala Tampu to Tyler Jolly saying, keep your head up. We wouldn't want a warning to turn the tide of this contest. Minute to go in the third and final round. That left cross from Johan Croft, not too far away. Tyler Jolly in search of his own backhand. Croft is not conceding the ground now either. He's sort of moving around, circular movement from Croft. So he's holding the centre. Both boxers skating on thin house. I see her on with these warnings by the referee. Tyler Jolly shaking his head in frustrated fashion, but he's got to keep his mind on the job. This contest still up for grabs and another stern talking to in the direction of Johan Croft from the referee. Counter right hand landed by Croft as he looked to disengage, by Jolly as he looked to disengage. Croft fired back with a shot of his own. Still, oh, that's a beautiful left cross and another one. Jolly's got to go in search of his get back. That might just be enough, Ronald. There's Indeed. nothing in this. And then Tyler Jolly colliding with the referee briefly. Another left hook, that's home from Johan Croft. Jolly comes forward 
But I think the stronger conclusion to the round has been produced by the man in red. And could that prove decisive? I happen to think it will be decisive, but this one is incredibly close. What say the five scoring judges? Just a reminder of the context as to how things stood entering the third and final round. 19 points apiece for judges, two, three, four, and five. An incredibly competitive third round. That's the clash of heads that caused the cut. But in, an incredibly competitive third round saw Croft end it strong. Yes, it was very close indeed. Jolly, time and again coming forward, fast raiding attacks and had success. The heads were always going to clash. It's an orthodox South Fork situation. But Croft just produced the eye catches right at the end of the contest. Could that be enough? Ladies and gentlemen, we go to your scorecards where we have a split decision in favor of your winner and progressing to the Commonwealth Games finals. In the red And it's Johan Croft who celebrates. Wales. While Tyler Jolly dejectedly sings to his knees. An incredibly competitive encounter between two familiar rivals results in a repeat victory for Johan Croft. And the 20 year old from Cardigan in West Wales goes through to contest Commonwealth Games gold here at the conclusion of a terrific contest. Wonderful to see that respect between the coaches and the opposing boxer and indeed between the boxers themselves. They know one another very well and on this occasion it is Tyler, Tyler Jolly who has been bested. He comes away with a brilliant Commonwealth Games bronze but it's Johan Croft who goes through to the final where he will box for Commonwealth Games gold in a 67 kilogram welterweight division. What a contest! And there is his identical twin brother Garan Croft who came away with Commonwealth Games bronze. The two boys from farm country in West Wales representing their nation on the stage of the Commonwealth Games and it's Johan Croft who will add another medal to his collection in, what, in the course of what has been a fantastic summer where he's picked up back-to-back -back European medals as well. It was always going to be a close contest this one, they know each other, they've boxed before and it was Jolly that started the better, fast raiding attacks from him and Croft just didn't get his timing right in that first round and Jolly did the better work. Croft came back in that second round, took it and then it was all on the last and probably down to the last 20 or 30 seconds where Croft produced a bit of quality, a couple of eye-catching shots that impressed the judges and Prodham just got it.